Hello, welcome to VMZ, I'm Dr. M. Did you know that there is a disease that can leave your dog or cat unable to break down and absorb any of the food that they eat, no matter how much of it they're eating? It's called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'll be explaining what it is, how we diagnose it, how we treat it, and some common myths and misconceptions. So join me, you'll learn something today. So the pancreas is an organ that has both endocrine and exocrine functions. For the endocrine side of things, this is how the pancreas releases insulin and glucagon that helps to regulate blood sugar levels. We're going to be focusing on the exocrine side of the pancreas's function today. This is where the pancreas excretes enzymes that help the body to break down all of the micronutrients that are being eaten. Carbs, fats, protein, you name it, the pancreas helps to digest it. The exocrine pancreas also secretes bicarbonate, which helps to buffer stomach acid. The specific issue that we are covering today is called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. What this name means is that the exocrine functions of the pancreas are not happening as much as they should be. Now this could be that either the pancreas is not making enough of the enzymes it should be, or it might just not be secreting enough of the enzymes that it should be, or it could be both. Now there are a few different reasons reasons why different animals could experience EPI. There are some breeds that are predisposed to developing it. Most commonly we think about the German Shepherd, Rough Collies, and Eurasians. In these dogs we tend to diagnose EPI when they are kind of teenagers to young adults as they're growing up and that's because it's most common for these dogs to have deterioration of the pancreas that's supposed to be secreting these enzymes. Long-term inflammation of the pancreas, which we call pancreatitis. I've done a video on it before. I'll link it down below. Long-term inflammation in the pancreas is the most common cause for EPI in cats and other dog breeds. It's also possible that we might have, say, a tumor or a mass or something that blocks the ducts that secrete the enzymes. So for this reason, in all other dog breeds, we tend to diagnose EPI when they are middle-aged or older adults. The Exocrine pancreas does have quite a reserve in regards to its function. So we have to lose over 80% of the exocrine pancreas's function before we will see clinical symptoms of EPI. Now when this happens, we mostly see signs of maldigestion, meaning that no matter what the animal eats, they're not able to digest it properly, so they cannot use the nutrients to fuel their body. However, a lot of animals with EPI also show signs of mal absorption, meaning that even if the nutrient does get broken down, their GI tract doesn't absorb it as well as a healthy animal's digestive tract would be. We don't fully understand why these animals aren't absorbing nutrients properly, we just know that it's happening. So as you can imagine, not being able to break down any food you eat and not being able to absorb nutrients properly leads to weight loss and malnutrition over time. Next, let's discuss the common symptoms that you might notice. A lot of these patients will have unexplained hunger. They will eat and eat and eat and eat, but they'll always feel hungry. And this is often also accompanied by weight loss. We tend to also see them have poor quality coats. Their coat will be dry and brittle and just look unkept. Because of the malnutrition and hunger, some of these pets will start doing a behavior that we call pika. They might start eating non-food items. Some of them will also start doing coprophagia, which is when they start eating feces, whether their own or somebody else's. I do also have a previous video with more information on coprophagia. In some cats who have EPI, because there's so much more fat that's not being used by their body, we can sometimes see a greasy appearance in the fur and legs around their rectum because that fat is just coming out in their feces and getting into their coat around their back end. Now, the feces that an animal with EPI will have are most commonly loose. They will be quite malodorous. Often they can be pale in appearance, but not always. And the amount of fecal material that the animal will pass will be quite voluminous. In rare cases, we might see watery diarrhea, but often that means that there is another problem 
underlying along with the EPI. Next, let's cover how we go about diagnosing EPI. My dog is snoring. I have both my dog and my cat here helping me as I'm trying to film these videos today. This one is a little bit tricky because there are so many different medical issues that can cause these symptoms or very similar ones. It is common for us to not diagnose EPI on a first vet clinic visit. Often when you see your veterinarian saying that your pet is having GI symptoms, we will tend to do things like check abdominal x-rays to look for obstructions, or we may do a general blood work panel. We will also often check a fecal sample, and none of these will specifically diagnose EPI. It's also common that on a first visit to your vet clinic, your veterinarian will likely recommend that you feed a prescription gastro diet. They're easier to digest, they can help your pet support their GI tract as we're trying to figure out what's going on, and they are designed to be very palatable as well. Often we will do these sorts of things and say if your pet doesn't get better, then we'll need to continue doing the medical workup. So if that happens for your pet that ends up being diagnosed with EPI, I wouldn't be surprised. That's pretty common. Then because our first round of our medical workup doesn't end up resolving the problem, clients will end up coming back with their dog or their cat and say, hey doc, I'm still having trouble. And at this point, we need to delve even further into our medical workup. Often this involves more specific GI blood work panels, and this will tend to be where something like EPI may get diagnosed. The specific blood work that we need to diagnose EPI is called trypsin-like immunoreactivity, or TLI. And at the same time, if we're suspecting that we have a patient with EPI, we should also be checking for low vitamin levels like vitamin B12 or cobalamin in those animals. So we may test for those sorts of things at the same time as we run the TLI test. So now that we've checked your pet's TLI, we will have a diagnosis at this point. So how do we treat it? Well, the treatment is going to be lifelong. This is not something that can be cured. However, treatment generally goes pretty well. The cornerstone of treatment is adding enzymes that the pancreas would usually be making and secreting. We add those enzymes into your pet's meals. These enzymes do the job of helping your animal break down their meals into the nutrients they need for them since their pancreas isn't able to. It's important to remember that powder is going to be the most effective pancreatic enzyme supplement. Capsules and tablets are less recommended. Once we get all of the clinical symptoms resolved, then what we end up doing is decreasing the dose of the enzymes until we find the lowest dose that manages your individual pet's symptoms. There is one side effect that we will note somewhat uncommonly, and that can be that your pet might experience some bleeding from their mouth with these enzyme supplements being added. All of the animals in the research study that had this happen to them ended up having that bleeding go away as soon as the dose of the pancreatic enzyme supplement was reduced. It may also help to add a little bit of water to the powder before adding it to the food for your pet. That may reduce their oral bleeding as well, but sometimes we will end up needing to switch brands of pancreatic enzyme supplement and some pets will do better on one brand over another. So if we're not getting a resolution of symptoms that may be something your veterinarian discusses with you or if they do have that oral bleeding side effect, we may also swap in that case. It is important to remember that although pancreatic enzyme supplementation will reduce symptoms in the majority of these patients, the breakdown and absorption of all of the nutrients, especially fat, is still Still not going to be the same as it would be for a normal patient. So there's a few other things that we also end up doing. A prescription gastro diet that is moderate in fat and lower in fiber or a prescription hydrolyzed protein formula are the most common diets that we reach for in order to continue to support that animal's GI tract as best as we possibly can. This is because the added probiotics and the ease of the breaking down of those diets does help these animals to compensate for their still abnormal digestion and absorption. Most of the time we also end up needing to supplement with 
cobalamin or B12. Over 80% of dogs and almost all cats are deficient in this vitamin specifically. This is because cobalamin relies on intrinsic factor in order for it to be absorbed in the GI tract. Intrinsic factor is something that is secreted by the pancreas. As a result, checking cobalamin levels and folate levels regularly is something you should expect your veterinarian to be doing if you have an animal that has EPI. We end up often needing to supplement pets for these deficiencies and may need to do so again in the future depending on how well their EPI ends up being managed. For cobalamin specifically, this generally means an injection of that vitamin as it's better absorbed after that instead of trying to give it by mouth. If all of those things have been done and your animal still just isn't responding very well or is still really struggling, that's when we need to continue the medical workup because some of these patients will have concurrent other issues that are going on. Most commonly will concurrently be dealing with dysbiosis, which is a problem with how the microbiome health is for your animal. I actually have a previous video that discusses the GI tract and its microbiome in more detail. If your animal isn't dealing with dysbiosis, then something like IBD might be present or there may be another medical issue and we'll just need to keep working to figure out why your pet is still struggling and having symptoms. So you will need to mix those pancreatic enzyme supplements into your pet's meals for the rest of their lives. There will need to be more regular blood work panels to check on vitamin levels and to check symptoms and to make sure your animal keeps a healthy weight and so on. But a lot of my patients dealing with EPI do bounce back wonderfully once we get their treatment plan sorted out. And a lot of these animals do lead a pretty normal life. Their life expectancy is also normal, which is wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today and for taking your pet's health so seriously. I do put up a new video most Fridays and YouTube thinks that you'll like this video. I hope that you and your pets stay happy and healthy until I see you next time. All right, bye.